what the hell is happening in Ecuador. That's what I'll talk about in this video. As always, if you're interested in survival and preparedness, you have a channel with a lot of uploaded videos, a lot of content that you're probably interested in. Always appreciated your suggestions and questions. If you have any topic you'd like me to develop further in another video, let me know in the comments there below. More than happy to do that. And as always, you have my books available in Amazon in the links below. If you want to prepare for what's happening and what's coming, you have Surviving the Economic Collapse and Street Survival Skills, both books which will help you greatly in your preparedness. Let's watch this and comment. Gangsters have unleashed a wave of terror in Ecuador. A series of coordinated attacks the government is struggling to contain. Heavily armed narcos stormed a TV station in Ecuador's largest city, Guayaquil, during a live news show. The masked gunmen said they were there to warn Ecuadorians not to mess with the mafia. The attack was swift and violent. They shot one of our cameramen in the leg, broke the arm of another one. They fired bullets, they used their weapons inside. One TV station employee who wants to conceal his identity shared what he saw. Look at these clowns. Uh, these are beyond criminal. They, you're looking at a, at a war going on in Ecuador right now. These are not simply criminals. Uh, a, a criminal is, yes, someone with, with a firearm that is breaking the law, attacking people, doing horrible things. This is a lot more organized, so it looks similar, but you always have to keep in mind the difference. This is so widespread, so extended, that it's either a terror attack, more likely, this is more along the lines of a civil war. And I'll explain that when we finish watching this. We were in the newsroom. All of a sudden, I saw one of my colleagues with a terrified look on his face. And he said, they're coming to kill us. They've already got inside the TV station. And then I heard gunshots and a lot of noise. And then what I did was get out of the area where the editor was. I grabbed my phone and I started running like crazy towards safety. About 30 minutes after the gunman appeared, police could be seen entering the TV station. The gangsters were captured, but the attack left Ecuadorians horrified. Unbelievable. It's the first time this has happened in this country. So this is very typical. Our, our friend here, Arturo, Luis Arturo, thinks, oh, this is the first time that... No, this is the first time you visualize this. Ecuador is a country that has fallen to narco-traffics, ga gangs, criminal elements growing and festing like a disease up to the point where they basically control the country. And given the left-wing politics typical of Ecuador, you have to remember this only makes sense if you understand that the country was ruled for a very long period of time by this gentleman right there, Rafael Correa, 10 years in power after him, his vice president, Lenin Moreno. Interesting name, Lenin four years, and the next guy to come was a more moderate centrist that only lasted two years, and now they have Daniel Novoa just a month in power, and they're already taking the country from him, because these people are the ones that were working along with the, the traffickers, the, the, the drug gangs, the cartels, those are the ones that are really in power. So, this is very typical of the left all across Latin America and the world over. The left usually aligns with criminal elements that come to some sort of agreement. Typical of South America, the, the narcos, the drug gangs, or the cartels, the criminal elements, the, the people trafficking with other human beings, slaves, all of these, they, they just coat themselves, they cover themselves with social justice, human rights, LGBTQ+, whatever the hell it is, all of that nonsense just as a disguise to what they're really doing. This is Correa. This is the result of having this guy in power for so long, right? And these people not being able to get the country back on track. Now, if you had a socialist president right now in 
in, in, in Ecuador, you would see that this would be a lot more subdued. I mean, it would still be there, but it would be a little bit more calm. They wouldn't lose their shit and start taking over uh, news media uh, stations. They, they wouldn't do that, right? They would just keep operating there uh, and unbothered. But when they're not in power anymore, that's what they do. And it's not even as if they have some radical right wing. No, this Daniel Novoa, this is a, a man that comes from one of the richest families of Ecuador that has always been involved in politics. And he describes himself as a center to left moderate with a little bit more of a, of a liberal approach to market, if that. So this is a guy that wants to have a, a more civilized, common sense center left socialism, European style, let's put it that way. That is not good enough for the hard left Correctas style of, of cartels that want to have even more control themselves and have no chance of any growth, any progress, any civilized future for the people of Ecuador. That's why they cannot have a, a government. That's why immediately they are hacked down. And besides, it's also true that there's a war ongoing among the different gang elements. The different cartels are fighting for power because they no longer have um, an ally in, in, the, in the political sphere, a president that is sided with them, so as to somewhat organize things and, and see how everyone behaves like somewhat civilized criminals. That is lost. leave everything to Mr. President, to the hand of God. Mr. President, you have to put a firm hand on this, because if he takes a step back, it'll be worse. Shops and schools are shut. Ecuadorians say the prevailing atmosphere is one of fear. Thousands of law enforcement personnel are combing the country for notorious gang boss, Aldolfo Macias, known by his alias, Fito. He's the kingpin of Los Choneros one of the most powerful cartels in Ecuador. Fido apparently fled a high-security jail on Sunday. Authorities say a second major gang leader and other inmates subsequently escaped from another prison. Penitentiaries have been the focal points of the unrest. So this is what's, what's going on right now. The, the police is, you know, helping out, but mostly now it is, it is the military. It is a state of siege in which the country is in. There's a, a suspension of the, you know, the constitutional rights that they have. You are basically seeing a country that's going at, to war against these criminal elements. There have been incidents in at least six prisons around the country. Police officers guarding the jail have been kidnapped. And there are reports of explosions near the homes of representatives of the judicial system. Ecuador has been wracked by a surge of violence in recent years tied to drug trafficking, including homicides and kidnappings. The country will be in a state of emergency for 60 days, during which officials can suspend people's rights and mobilize the army in places, including prisons. Okay, so this is basically what you see here. Um, a country that is not fighting criminals, a country that is at war with um, an alternative government that has been in control of all of this. The drug dealers, the cartels, and when people finally voted for someone that is offering a little bit more of a, of a civilized alternative, the cartels said, no, we do not want this. We want to have damn Fito, which is the drug dealer here with his you know his AK forty sevens and his and his US dollars, right? That's what they're looking for. And it will be a war. It will be a war like in El Salvador, with Bukele that understood this clearly. Once you understand this, then it is a lot easier to have a possible future. You don't have to fight these people as if you're fighting criminals, you're fighting a war. Once you get that through your head, then you can have uh, um, a, po uh, a possible future. You have an option so as to go forward. But until you realize that this is war, that's it. This is a real war. These guys, these are very well armed, very well uh, organized elements that are overthrowing the government, the democratically elected government that they don't approve of. 
They will approve of if it's a, a socialist, if it's an ally of them, but they will not approve of someone that is not aligned with them. So yeah, that's what you have. You, you have a, a terror gang, a terror organization. It's not just one gang, it's a number of them at times fighting among them, but you are at war in Ecuador. That's what you're seeing. Guys, see you in the next video. Take care.